following is a presentation of TBS Sports. Superstation WTBS presents, in stereo, America's team, the Atlanta Braves. Hi, once again, everyone, Pete Van Weren welcoming you to what should be a truly memorable day here at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium as the Atlanta Braves close out the home season against the San Francisco Giants. For the Giants, it could be memorable because the champagne is on ice. If the Giants win today and the Cincinnati Reds lose their game to Houston, the Giants will be the winners of the National League West. For Braves fans, it'll be memorable because today marks the final appearance in a Braves uniform of 48-year-old right-handed pitcher Phil Necro. For the past 29 years, Phil has been playing professional baseball, 25 of them in an Atlanta uniform. He always said that he would want to come back and pitch his final game in a Braves uniform. Today is that day, and earlier, Skip Carey had a chance to sit down and talk with Phil. Well, old friend, what's in your heart as you get ready to pitch this one? Well, I got a Glenn Hubbard bat here and a Craig Nittles glove in my hand, so if I don't pitch well, maybe I could do something with the bat got to be a great thrill for you. I know this uh, it's going to be fun, but it's also a bittersweet sort of thing, I suppose. Well, I hope it's fun. Um, I'm going to tr try and win like I always have. Uh, I think probably the nice thing about this particular ball game, Skip, is, is, is winning and losing is important. It always has been, but knowing that my last pitch in the big leagues, the last pitch I'm going to throw in my career is going to be with Atlanta Grave Head on, and that's, that's, I can't think of a better no kind of a better way than in my career with Atlanta Brave Head. Don't know how to tell the people this, but even when you were in New York and Cleveland and Toronto, you were an Atlanta Brave and you always will be. Good luck. Thank you, Skip. That's Phil Necro, and we'll be back with the game right after this. Phil Necro gets his third standing ovation of the afternoon. He's completed his warm up tosses and is headed back to the Atlanta dugout as he visits with Homer the Brave. Here's the way they line up for the Giants Ed Milner in center field, Kevin Mitchell at third base, Mike Aldretti is the left fielder, and first baseman Will Clark will bat cleanup. Chili Davis in right field, Bob Brenly will catch, he'll bat sixth. Robbie Thompson, the second baseman, bat seventh. Jose Uribe is the shortstop, he hits eighth, and Atley Hamaker will do the pitching. Amaker is 10 and 10, an earned run average of 3.33. For Atlanta, Albert Hall in center field leads it off, followed by Ken Obergfell at third base. Gerald Perry plays first, and right fielder Dale Murphy bats cleanup. Gary Renicki in left field today. He hits fifth. Jeff Blauser will play shortstop and hit sixth. Bruce Benedict, who caught so many of Phil Necro's games in his last few years in Atlanta. Benedict, the catcher, bats seventh, and Glenn Hubbard plays second base today hits eight Phil Necro will do the pitching with Toronto and mostly Cleveland this year he was seven and thirteen in the American League your umpires behind the plate Terry Tata Harry Wendelstead at first base Bob Davidson at second and Jerry Crawford will call the plays at third the Braves take the field and in just a moment Phil Necro will make his way to the mound for the very last time and they're on their feet again here in Atlanta and if you've been around this place and you don't get goosebumps today, you better get well. There's Nancy, Phil's lovely wife. Everybody standing in Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Boy, this is really something. The crowd is at least 30, I would guess. And Necro starts the warm-up tosses. In the other baseball, Montreal leads Philadelphia 1-0 after an inning and a half. Pittsburgh and New York scoreless after one and a half. The other action is later on. American League Toronto leading Detroit again one nothing after an inning. Doyle Alexander against Jack Clancy in that one. California got two in the first at Cleveland. All the other action later. New York at Baltimore. Kansas City at Minnesota. Boston at Milwaukee. Chicago plays at Oakland and Texas is at Seattle. So Necro gets ready to go to work. He says he's been working on that EFIS pitch he used to throw as an adjunct to his knuckleball which as you can see as he warms up is still <laughs> very difficult for Bruce Benedict to contend with and you just saw the EFAS pitch the throw goes to second we're ready to go Ed Milner will lead it off 
And leading off the play-by-play -play broadcast here once again, Pete Van Weeren. Okay, thank you, Skip. It's going to be a lot of fun here this afternoon. There you see the remarkable record of Phil Necro. 12th on the all-time list in wins, 7th on the all-time list in strikeouts, 3rd on the all-time list in games started, 10th on the all-time list in games pitched, 4th on the all-time list in innings pitched. Most of his career, of course, spent in the Braves organization. Two years with the Yankees, a little over a year with Cleveland, a little less than a month with the Toronto Blue Jays, and now he's back where he's always wanted to be. Wearing that number 35 and this may be the first time in the history of baseball that a number has been unretired to allow a player to come back and play in a ball game. They retired Phil Necro's uniform number a couple of years ago. Eddie Milner batting 240 four home runs 18 RBIs. We are underway as a called strike in the inside corner. And how's this for a touch of irony the plate umpire today Terry Tata was the plate umpire when Phil Necro pitched his no hitter. The only no hitter ever pitched by an Atlanta Brave. There's the Ephus pitch, and it's popped up. Shallow left field down the line. Blouser long run. Diving try. Couldn't quite come up with it. The count 0 and 2. Good effort by Blouser, and I'll tell you what, a lot of kidding around before the game by the players, but they are really pumped up for this game. Uh, youngsters like Blouser, I. Look up to Phil Necro like a grandfather, but the Hubbards and the Obergfells and the Benedicts and Murphys who have been around through and throughout his career, Gary Renicky, who's played against him, they all want to do well today. The count nothing and two on Eddie Milner. Threw a fastball, missed high with it, one and two. After being released by Toronto, the only workout that Phil Necro went through was playing catch with his sons in his backyard. So he has not pitched in a ball game in nearly four weeks. He did throw batting practice a couple of times earlier in the week getting ready for this start. But he tells you flat out all it is is a matter of control. If he can get the knuckleball in the Ethos pitch over he'll win the ball game. Renicky out there and left waiting one away in the top of the first. Now the third baseman Kevin Mitchell who is batting 278 21 homers 65 RBIs. They have flown champagne all the way in from Northern California to the San Francisco Giants clubhouse. They hope to be able to celebrate a Western Division title today. Ball one the count on Mitchell. I sort of hope they get beat and send a bottle over to Nuxie to celebrate his win. That would be a nice idea. Here's the 1 0. High in the air, straight away center. Albert Hall waiting for this one. And that's out number two. There you see the numbers Phil Necro recorded as a Brave. I think if you asked Phil, he would say the one thing he truly regrets in his career is that he didn't win his 300th game for Atlanta. He won that as a member of the New York Yankees on the final day of the 1985 season. What's your the memory that not counting today that comes to your mind. I bet it's the same one as mine. Well I could think of a couple. First of all the pitch to Aldredi low and inside ball one that game in San Diego yeah. during 1982 when he shut out the Padres the final week of the season hit the home run. The 1 0 pitch. Just missed 2 0. His 200th win in Pittsburgh. Back in the late 70s a memorable night. He had flown his entire family in from Ohio and up from Atlanta to be there for that occasion. 3 0 the count. The game in San Diego will always be mine because it was in the clutch and he not only pitched right. the shutout, he hit the home run, he did everything. Here's the 3 0 pitch and it's high with a fastball, ball four. Aldredi draws a walk. Now, anyone who has spent any time with this Braves ball club, whether it was as a player, a broadcaster, a writer, a fan, they all have their favorite memories of Nuxi. On the field and off, off the field, perhaps one of the most involved ball players in community activities in any sport. Will Clark batting 308, 33 homers, 88 RBIs. Taking down low ball one. 
Someone once told me a lot of ball players lend their names to charities, let their names be used to promote a charity. But someone once told me who was a member of a local charity group that when Phil Necro says he will let you use his name, that means you're going to work harder because Phil makes you. He's in there working just as hard as all the volunteers are. Well, ask the folks at Spina Bifida about that. Right. 2-0 the count. Negro having a little trouble finding that strike zone on the last two hitters. Two outs in the top of the first. Negro lifetime, 30 wins, 16 losses against the Giants. And he's fallen behind 3 and nothing now on Will Clark. You notice right away, not having seen pitch Phil, uh, Phil pitch live in a game in four years, that he doesn't throw the knuckler quite as hard as he used to. There's a strike to count three and one. Back safely, Aldretti. Down to first goes Clark. Then advances Aldretti to second. So back-to-back -back walks here in the first inning after two men are out. And Chili Davis will step in. You know, these Giants aren't going to roll over here just because a living legend is on the mound. They have a pennant to win, and number one, or number two, Phil Necro wouldn't want it that way. If they're going to knock his around, that's the way it's going to be. There can't be any sentiment between those white lines. Davis batting 243, a career high 22 home runs, 72 RBIs. Necro has done just about everything that is possible to do in a major league career, except the one dream that every player has playing in a World Series. He's been a 20 game winner on three occasions. He has pitched a no hitter, 300 plus career victories, 318 coming into this game. It all began for Phil in 1959 in Wellsville, New York, a Class A farm club of the Braves. There's a strike on the inside corner, one and one. His minor league experience saw him play in Wellsville, McCook, Nebraska, Jacksonville, Louisville, Austin, Denver, briefly at Richmond. He first came to the Braves in 1964 when they were still in Milwaukee. Did you hear about his first experience in Wellsville? Two and one. I don't know as I've ever heard that story. I think he got to either the train, I think it was a train depot or the bus station and took a cab to the boarding house where the ball club stayed. And as he got out of the cab, the manager was being cold cocked by one of his players. That was his introduction <laughs> to pro ball. Back in 1959. That's a foul ball. The count two and two now on Chili Davis. A lot of controversy when Phil was released by the Braves at the end of the 1983 season. He went on to win 16 with the Yankees in 84, 16 more with the Yankees in 85. He won 11 games for Cleveland last year and was 7 and 13 combined for Cleveland and Toronto this year. That's 50 victories since leaving Atlanta. The count full now, 3 and 2 on Chili Davis. The knuckleball has always been a hard, hard pitch to control, of course. And now the fastball doesn't have the muscle on it that it had five years ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Three and two, the count on Chili Davis. The runners will be taking off here with two outs. Negro delivers and he loads them up. Three walks in the inning. Bob Brentley will bat with the bases loaded. What happens after today in the career of Phil Necro still somewhat undecided it will be a position in the Braves organization for him exactly what that position is going to be has not yet been determined. He has expressed an interest in managing in the minor leagues perhaps coaching in the majors perhaps a front office position there's a call strike to Brindley. Brindley batting 273 17 homers 49 runs driven in.
there's the Ephus and it's lined and a great grab by Obergfell ends the inning. And Obergfell saves a couple of runs. The Giants are retired in the top of the first. Another standing ovation for Phil Necro. We've played a half inning with no score. Bottom half of the first inning, a look at the Giants defensively. An outfield of Aldretti, Milner, and Davis. Around the infield, Mitchell, Uribe, Thompson, and Clark. Bob Brenly doing the catching. On the mound, left-hander Atley Hamaker. Making his 30th appearance, his 26th start. He has two complete games. There you see the numbers for the year on Atley Hamaker, who missed almost two full seasons because of rotator cuff problems. He's made quite a comeback. Hamaker didn't play at all last year. Pitched very briefly in 84. Tried to pitch in 85 with the injury. Didn't have that bad a year as ERA 3.74. Yeah. He has no record this year. Two and two lifetime against Atlanta. And the Braves will send up Albert Hall, Ken Obrickfell, and Gerald Perry here in the bottom half of the first inning. Another beautiful day as the Braves wrap up the home portion of their schedule. One week on the road remaining. Two games in Cincinnati, two in Houston, and three in San Francisco. Albert Hall, 297, three homers, 22 runs driven in. Albert's goal for the closing days of this season are to get to that 300 mark. He's been closing in on it down the stretch, getting a chance to play every day. That'll be out of play. Nothing and one. The count on Hall. We'll be keeping an eye on all the other baseball for you as the afternoon goes on. Toronto and Detroit playing again. Doyle Alexander facing Jim Clancy. Now again, out of play. Nothing and two. The National League East race has St. Louis out in front of New York by three and a half, Montreal by four. Cardinals play at Chicago today. Mets are at home against Pittsburgh. Montreal plays at Philadelphia. Hamaker with the 0 2 to Hall. Low and inside with a fastball, one and two. Jets lead the Raiders 22-17. Second, oops, sure they do. my mistake. That may be true, but it's on a sandlot somewhere yeah. out in Long Island. Here's the one-two. Got him with a fastball. All down on strikes. Hamaker really buzz bombs this ball. Perfect pitch, down and in. Now third baseman Ken Obergfell batting 281 with three homers and 47 runs driven in. We are scoreless bottom half of the first inning. Fouled away, nothing in one. Hamaker has pitched so impressively the second half of the season that Roger Craig has elevated him to the number three spot in the rotation behind Russell and Dravecki. If the Giants make it to the playoffs, which seems a certainty, he would pitch the third game. Into shallow right field, Chili Davis with a long run, but he's going to get there for out number two. Two down, bottom of the first now, Gerald Perry. Perry at 269, 10 home runs, 68 RBIs. the count on Perry. Line in the right field, base hit. A two-out single by Gerald Perry gives the Braves their first base runner. And you'll hear another big ovation now for Dale Murphy.
Murphy at 302, 43 home runs, 102 RBIs. Everybody assumes that he'll be back in the Braves uniform next year, but he is eligible to become a free agent. Braves will go to work on trying to re-sign Dale as soon as the season ends. The runner going, the pitch is inside. Brenly's throw is not going to be in time. And Gerald Perry with his 37th stolen base of the season. And he stole it on Hammaker. He got a terrific jump, a tough pitch for Brenly to handle down and in. His throw was not good, but even a perfect throw would not have been good enough. The Giants have caught more opponents stealing than any team in baseball. They've thrown out 42% of the attempted base stealers against them. That's a very good figure. Here's the 1 0 to Murphy, and he hits one foul. One and one to count. Certain pitchers in the National League that Murphy has really owned over the years, and Atley Hammaker, one of them. Most of the pitchers that Murphy has hit extremely well over the years have been pitchers very much like Atley Hammaker. Bob Nepper comes to mind. From the right side, Andy McGaffigan, a pitcher that Murph has had his share of success against. There's the 1-1 one -one up high. 2-1. Boy, until this guy got hurt, he looked like he was going to be a Cy Young candidate year after year after year. He's still a pretty good pitcher. Led the league and earned run average one year. He's behind in the count two and one. Now Murphy steps out. Fans still filing in. We're going to have over 30,000 here today. Here's the 2 1 delivery, and Murphy takes it high, 3 and 1. Gary Renicky waiting on deck. Tell you how good things have been going for the San Francisco Giants this year. Last night was Fan Appreciation Night here at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. The grand prize, a 1987 automobile. They're going to walk Murphy now. They called out that winning ticket, and a family of three a husband, a wife, and a little boy. Jumped for joy, ran down in the field. The boy was wearing a full Giants uniform with a Giants cap. Gentleman wearing a Giants t-shirt and a Giants cap. So their fans walked off with a car. Here on Atlanta's fan appreciation night. That's baseball. Runners first and second now with two down for Gary Renicky. Batting 226, eight homers, 24 runs driven in. Renicky taking a strike, nothing and one. Braves still with hopes of finishing fourth in the division. They're a half game behind the Dodgers. Coming into this one. Here's the one strike pitch. An off speed breaking ball missing. One and one. Giants loaded up the bases in the top half of the inning. Necro pitched out of it. Now Hamaker trying to work out of a first and second two out situation. Here's the one one. Line toward left. Aldretti on the run. He'll get there and make the catch to end the inning. And the Braves strand a couple. We've played one at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium with a score. The Braves nothing and the Giants nothing. Brought to you by Sure Antiperspirant. Now Sure is available in a new desert spice scent. In 1984, Dick Schofield Jr. was the California Angels starting shortstop the day Mike Witt threw a perfect game. But did you know that 25 years earlier, when the Pirates' Harvey Haddix threw 12 perfect innings, the starting shortstop that night was Dick's father, Dick Schofield Sr. We go to the top half of the second inning with no score. Lower third of the order due up for the Giants. Robbie Thompson, Jose Uribe, and Atlee Hammaker. 
For you Giants fans looking in, some good news for you from Cincinnati. Houston has jumped on top of the Reds 2-0 in the second inning of that game. Solo home runs by Kevin Bass and Jim Pankovitz, giving the Astros an early lead. Robbie Thompson leads it off for the Giants, batting 262, 10 homers, and 42 RBIs. Seems like a game out of the 70s to look out there in the mound and see good old number 35 out there. Nothing and one the count on Robbie Thompson. Another knuckleball missed inside. One ball, one strike. You look over Necro's record, and it's just remarkable the things he's accomplished. 23 game winner in 69, a 20 game winner in 74. He won 21 games in 79. Little tap toward short. Blouser fields on the first in time. Thompson retired. Jose Uribe will be stepping in. Necro led the National League in winning percentage in 82, the last time the Braves won a division. He was 17 and 4 that year. He pitched the only no hitter ever by a Brave. That was against the Padres on August 5th, 1973. Won five gold gloves for his fielding prowess. A rebate at 275, five homers and 28 RBIs. Pass ball for a strike in the outside corner. No score, top half of inning two. Knuckler outside, one and one. Coming up in the minor leagues, there were questions about whether Phil would ever make it to the major leagues, simply because they couldn't find a catcher in the organization who could handle the knuckleball. Through that real off-speed knuckler, missed low and inside, two and one. Because of the way that knuckleball dances, Phil Necro once threw four wild pitches in a single inning. In the left center field, Albert Hall coming over. He's got it. Two down. And also, because it's such a difficult pitch to handle, Phil Necro was once able to strike out four hitters in a single inning. That's a major league record. That happened back in July of 1977. One of the first three strikeouts, the ball got by the catcher. The runner reached first safely, and he struck out the next guy. Four strikeouts in one inning, a major league record. Adley Hammaker batting 093. No homers and three RBIs. Three. Nothing in one to count. Two outs, nobody on. We're scoreless in the top half of the second. The count 0 and 2. Bruce Benedict was Nuxie's catcher. The late 70s and early 80s always has handled the knuckleball very well. Fastball, little soft liner toward short and into left center field for a base hit. So Hammaker reaching with a two out single. That's the first hit allowed by Phil Negro. And it brings up Eddie Milner. Milner flied to left in the first inning. Skip, what was the record that Phil was telling us about the other night that he was so proud of? The most home runs hit by a pitcher and an outfielder playing for the same team. He and Hank Aaron. Yeah, that's right. Hold that record. Here's Milner. Ground ball, right side. Glenn Hubbard fields. Phil Necro has shut him down over the first two. We got to the bottom half of the second with no score. off the bottom of the second. Blouser hitting 248 with a couple of home runs, 12 RBIs. Hitting in the number six spot today. Benedict and Hubbard will follow. Please. Nothing and one, the count on Blouser. That evens the count one on one. No score, bottom half of inning two. Yeah. 
Here's the one one. That makes it two and one on Blouser. It's going to be very interesting in spring training next year. This young man has proven he can play up there and he's going to be pushing Andres Thomas, Rafael Ramirez for the job next year unless a deal is made. There's a ground at a third handed by Mitchell. And Blouser retired one away. Well, Pete, last year the rap on Mitchell was they couldn't find a position for him, and I don't know, but whatever we say him play, he plays third base just fine. The Giants will tell you he's played third base much above their expectations. They weren't really sure about him defensively, but he's handled himself extremely well with the glove over there. Here's Bruce Benedict batting 143 with a homer and five RBIs in very limited playing time this year. He is playing in just his 37th game of the season. Who's going to handle this one, Friendly or Clark? It'll be Will Clark in foul territory. Two down. Clark stumbled a little bit. That's where the confusion started on this little pop. And then they just barely missed a collision. Brindley got the word at the last moment to get out of the way. Here's Glenn Hubbard batting 267, five homers, 38 RBIs. Hamaker delivers a strike, nothing in one. The 0 1 on the way, breaking ball makes it nothing in two. Two men out, base is empty, and the 0-2 pitch to Hubbard is a fastball. Strike three called outside corner. Hubbard not agreeing with the call by Terry Tatum. First strike out of the inning, second of the game for Atley Hamaker, and it's a 1-2-3, bottom of the second for Atlanta. We've played two with no score. The third, Mitchell Aldretti and Clark do up against Phil Necro. They're scoreless after two. Mitchell fly to center his first time. is low ball one another game skip we were talking about games you remember Phil Necro pitching that near no hitter in Cincinnati gave up just one hit Cesar Geronimo I think it was in the eighth inning passed it that with two out past a diving Rod Gilbert very late in the season just missing his second no hitter two and oh the count now on Kevin Mitchell maybe the best game I ever saw in pitch was the last game of a year in Cincinnati I think he got beat one nothing an unearned run. It was like an hour and 30 minutes and only two or three hits and all little flare. Mm -hmm. The two one is drilled into right center field. That's in for at least one haul over quickly. Can't get to it. Mitchell's got himself an extra base hit. Let's see if he tries for three. He will hold on at second base. So it's a double for Kevin Mitchell his 20th double of the year. Hit number two allowed by Phil Necro. It was a knuckleball that didn't do anything. It stayed up in the hitter's eyes, and Mitchell's a good hitter, and he worked it hard. Paul was trying to cut it off. He knew that if he didn't, it's two bases. He missed connections out there. Now Aldretti, who drew a walk in the first. to bunt the knuckleball. Nothing in one. What did Ted Simmons say the other day? The knuckleball is the hardest pitch to learn to throw and it's the hardest pitch to learn to hit. That goes for bunting as well. The 0-1. Taken high and inside. One ball, one strike. He doesn't throw as hard as he used to. He still throws harder than Jim Bouton did the last time we yeah. saw him pitch.
One ball, one strike, nobody out. No score in the top of the third. Count goes to two and one. Bill's entire family here, his wife Nancy, his sons Philip, John, and Mike. John's now a freshman at Oklahoma State on a baseball scholarship where he's a pitcher. Going to room with Don Sutton's boy, right? He changed his mind. Don Sutton's boy did. Oh, did he? Yep. There's a line drive in the right center field. It's going to fall for a base hit. Mitchell's going to be held at third. Runners will be at first and third. No. Nope. With nobody out. Nope, they'll be at second and third. The throw missed the cutoff band, came all the way home. And Aldretti takes second on the throw. Well, he hit it off the end of the bat, but got enough of it to drop it in there. Mitchell was stopping at third all the way, and Hall's throw sailed. I don't know if there was really a cutoff man there in time, but it was not a good throw, and he's missed the cutoff man several times in the last few days. So now they're at second and third. Nobody out for Will Clark, who walked his first time up. Originally, uh, John Necro was going to be a roommate with Don Sutton's son, but at the last minute, Don's son changed his mind going to a small school now in California. There's a swinging strike, nothing and one on Will Clark. That was the hardest knuckleball he's thrown, I think, the one he just offered up to Clark. Here's the 0-1. He threw another hard knuckler and got it by him, nothing and two. That has always been a part of Phil Necro. If he gets himself in a jam, he's always seemed to be able to reach back for that little extra. And on the first two pitches, he's gotten first two swinging strikes to Will Clark. The 0 2. Fouled another hard knuckler off. And now 0 and 2. Bruce Benedict is back there trembling in his boots as he has for so many years because now he can really let one rip. I wish you had been at the Astrodome. You were doing a Falcon football game the night of all the pass balls and wild pitches. That was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Here comes the 0-2 to Will Clark. Again, he throws the hard knuckler, and Benedict does a good job staying with it. One and two. The one-two. Little tap down the first base side foul. Phil Necro, also one of the great pranksters in the game. And those memories you have of Phil in his career with the Braves. I'll never forget the old pencil and string trick. He dropped that pencil through the buttonhole in my coat one day in Chicago at Wrigley Field. I couldn't get that thing off. He said, I'll show you how after the game I opened up the broadcast went through the entire game with a pencil hanging out of my coat. I remember the time in West Palm we got him. Oh, yes. <laughs> it with was April 1st, his birthday. Yes. Cooperation of the West Palm Beach Police Department. <laughs> One and two, the count on Clark. Nobody out. Another hard knuckler has popped up into shallow right field. Murphy racing in. Mitchell tagging at third. Murphy makes the catch. Mitchell's going to stay put. One man out. You knew Mitchell wasn't going to go on this ball, not with Murphy's arm. And Dale hits the cutoff man here. Necro does his job as he always has. He was backing him up. Now Chuck Tanner to the mound to talk with Necro. Well, they may want to walk Chili Davis here. Davis, a left hand hitter. Brenly on deck, a right hand hitter. First base open. We'll see what decision they've come up with. You know, we won't know till after the game, but after they got the runners at second and third, I think Necro just made up his mind. Well, if they're going to carry me out, they're going to carry me out on my shield. I'm going back to throwing as hard as I can, and if I walk the ballpark, I walk the ballpark. Because he was a much better pitcher to Clark than he had been yeah. earlier. Threw much harder with that knuckler to Clark. Chili Davis walked his first time up. They are going to pitch to him. Just missed outside. that right field line Dale Murphy heading over toward the corner it is a foul ball up into the seats it had home run distance 
The count one and one. Been another trademark of Phil Necro. Whenever he's given up a long ball that looks like it might stay fair and be a home run, he will walk off the mound over almost all the way to the foul line to follow that ball down and kind of urge it over into foul territory. There was one particular home run Davy Lopes hit against him years ago. It did stay fair. By the time the ball cleared the fence, Phil was all the way behind home plate. I remember that too. Don't you wonder what 84 and 85 would have been like? Mm -hmm. Good stop by Benedict. He had to smother that ball like a hockey goalie. That's a great play, and that's why Necro has always given credit to Benedict to Bob Euchre. Look how long it's been since Bob Euchre caught. <laughs> He's become a TV star, but a baseball announcer for 20 years. But he he did a great job on the knuckleball. Yeah, he was one of Phil's first catchers when Phil came to the major leagues. Said it's easy to catch the knuckleball. Just run back to the screen, wait till it stops rolling. Pick it up. Here's the 2-1. Even two and two. Boy, Phil's got the crowd on his side today. We've got over 30,000 fans here, and they are pulling for him on every pitch. The bottom just dropped out of that. The count even two and two on Chili Davis. Runners at second and third. One man out, no score. Top of the third. And the 2 2 on the way. Line drive down the right field line. It is a foul ball. During that final week of the 82 season when Phil Necro shut out the Padres he also won a big game over the Giants down that I stretch. I think he shut them out too. I believe it was a shutout. The night before was it. Yeah that was the first one and San Diego was the second. One. 30 wins lifetime against the Giants 16 losses. Phil, one of those pitchers that always has enjoyed pitching in Candlestick Park in that win. That makes his knuckleball dance even more. Here's the 2-2. Just missed in the count full. Payoff pitch on the way. Missed outside, and that loads him up for Bob Brindley. That's the fourth walk issued by Negro. You know, Pete, wherever they're playing baseball today, I'll just bet that when a zero goes up on the scoreboard for the Giants, as it has in the first and second, and may or may not here in the third, I'll bet there's a lot of applause. Yeah. Everybody rooting for this guy, but he's in a mess now. Second base is loaded jam he's had. He had him with two outs in the first inning. Now it's a one out base is loaded spot here in the third for Brindley who lined out to third his first time up. There's a strike on the knuckler. Nothing in one. What gives you hope for him is watching Benedict try to catch that thing. He is bobbing and weaving like Muhammad Ali in his prime. Here's the 0-1. Swing and a miss at the knuckleball. Nothing in two. Davis off first. Aldretti off second. Mitchell off third. Crowd wants to see the strikeout. The 0 2 pitch to Brindley. Gets away from Benedict, but not far enough for the runners to move up. One ball, two strikes. I was watching the monitor on that pitch. That thing exploded. That was about letter high, and all of a sudden, shot straight up. Here's another look at that pitch. Watch it take off. One ball, two strikes.
And the one two took off again high and inside two and two. the 2 2 on the way grounded toward third Obert fell to second one Hubbard on the first double plays out of the mess. it's like he's never left Atlanta the Giants retired in the top of the third we are still scoreless As we go to the bottom half of the third, look who's back at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Carrying his thanks for the memories, Nuxie sign. Brother Francis, who is a big fan of the Braves and has been for years, used to be out here all the time when Phil Necro pitched. It'll be Phil Necro leading off here in the bottom of the third. This is going to be the first time Phil's hit in a game since 1983. And to tell you all about it, here's Skip. Okay, Pete, thank you. And they're on their feet again in Atlanta. still is a very good hitter for a pitcher. That's not bad at all. And he had a good rip there. It's 0 2. If Peter Pan was real, he wears number 35 for Atlanta. Just a routine ground ball to short. Phil just can't run at all anymore. And he's just loping down the line at first. Uribe winds up and fires it over the head of Will Clark. Phil Necro able to get down to second. And folks, it's going to take a triple to score him. We all know that's an E6, but if you're keeping score, mark it a double. <laughs> Inside, one ball, no strikes. So far, he has lived a charmed life today. And may it continue. All a strikeout victim his first time. A ball and a strike to count. Paul checks third base coach Russ Nixon. First and third, nobody out for Ken Obertrell. Well, this one, a script couldn't have been written any better than this. Phil Necro pitching out of two bases loaded jams in the first three innings, keeping the Giants off the board. The Braves have not scored yet. Wouldn't it be something if the first run of the game is scored by Phil Necro? He's the runner at third, nobody out. Well, if Chuck Tanner wants to cross him up, 
the suicide squeeze would surprise everybody. Including Phil. I think Phil would conveniently miss that side. Good live fastball, but low. One ball, no strength. Ken flied to short right his first time. A little chop. It is foul. Bob Brenly comes away with it. A one and one. The count to Obergefell. Necro at third. Hall at first. Nobody out. We are scoreless in the bottom of the third. Obergefell chucks out Russ Nixon. Hall could be running at any time. And that's on Hamaker's mind, too. A ball and a strike to Obergefell. Well, the talent search is finally over. Pete came up with a winner. Yeah, a couple of winners, the individual and the group. Inside, two balls and a strike. Didn't miss by much. Individual, a young lady named Kimberly Bramlett, the singer. She with is an terrific. outstanding voice. We congratulate her. The group, a group called Hot Grits and No Eggs. An acrobatic group. And the 2 1 instead the first, and Hall scampers back. Obergefell, Perry, and Murphy with a chance to give Atlanta the lead. The 2 1 pitch. There it is. Swung, double play ball. They're coming home, and Nick Rowe is in a run down. Four, two, and the runners at first from second. And he made the right base running play there. He stayed out of the double play. And he'll get yet another ovation as he heads back to the Atlanta dugout. That is the correct play. The runner at third, nobody out. The double play grounder is if you break. Trying to keep the team out of the double play. Even if they get you, you still have two men on and only one out. That's exactly what Necro did. This is a double play ball all the way to Thompson. The Necro breaking from the bag draws the throw home. By the time they get him out, no chance for a play anywhere else. So two men on, one man out. If you don't break there, they get the double play anyway, and you're still at third base. Gerald Perry singled his first time. And a good cut, but missed. 0 1. Well, Nuxie won't score the first run in this inning, but is the first player in the game tagged out by the catcher. <laughs> the 0-1. At the letters on the inside edge, it's 0-2. Sam Klingensmith celebrating his 76th birthday today in Port St. Lucie, Florida. That's a beautiful country down there. The 0-2 to Perry. Did it hit him? He says it did. Did Terry Tata says it didn't, and Perry wins the argument. And I know what happened to Tata. It hit the elbow, and that sounds almost like hitting a wood object. Here's another look at it. There's no question about the fact that it hit him. Terry Tata a bit screened on the play. So Gerald Perry simply showed him the bruise. Now here comes Norm Sherry out to talk to Atley Hamaker. Sometimes Roger Craig himself comes out to the mound to talk to his pitcher. Norm Sherry really a, a dual role on this team. He's the pitching coach, but there are days when Roger Craig says, I'll take care of that. You just get out of the bullpen and work with my pitchers down there. So Murphy bats with the bases loaded, one out. 
Mr. Clayton Hay looking in today has been under the weather. We hope he's feeling well. He's the uncle of one of our cameramen, Rick Lassiter. Murphy with the sacks full and one out. Boy, a grand slam here, and these people would be delirious. Ernie's boy and a fine, fine sportscaster in his own right, Ernie Johnson Jr., walking through the stand. I wonder how old he was when he first saw Phil Necro pitch. Low and inside, one ball, no strikes. The 1 0. Line, base hit. One run is it. Over it fell around third already boots it. Here comes the throw. He will be safe. And the Braves and Phil Necro lead 2 0. Russ Nixon waited to the last moment to wave in Ken Oberkfeld. The ball very sharply hit by Murphy. It gets Albert Hall home easily. When Aldredi bobbles it briefly out there, that's when Oberkfeld got the green light around third. So two runs are able to score. Stopping down at second is Gerald Perry. It's 2-0 Atlanta. Still only one man out. Gary Renicky the batter. And he lined to left his first time. There goes the runner. The throw is high. He's in there. And Murphy followed him up. That's uh, the second stolen base of the day for Gerald Perry. He now has 38, just one away from the Atlanta Braves record of 39 set by Brett Butler. And don't you don't blame Bob Brentley on that, boy. That was a tremendous jump by Perry. So another base hit could mean two more runs. I suppose they gave Murph two RBIs on that base hit. I never did hear an announcement. Pitch to Renicky. Swung, fly ball left field. Pretty well hit. That ball's got a chance. It's out of here. Home run. Five nothing Atlanta. Renicky's ninth home run of the year. He really turns on this breaking ball, a low knee high breaking ball over the left field wall. Three run homer, 27 RBIs for Renicky, five nothing Braves. Jeff Blauser, and it's low. One ball, no strikes. On Murphy's base hit, they gave him a single, and an air is charged already. Second air of the inning. Off the end of the bat, Clark Field steps on the back. That's the second out. Kelly Downs begins to work in the giant bullpen. And Bruce Benedict will be the batter. He went back into the dugout for some reason. Now heads out. Well, if Necro can just get six more outs, and that's not easy in the major leagues. He would have a chance to win this game. He has a five run lead. Well, now they must have changed the scoring again on the Murphy base hit. They put it back to one error out there. So I guess they are going to give Murphy two RBIs. Well, good. Our PA system is apparently on the blink today because we can't hear the official score. Benedict popped out his first time. Pops this one out of play. That almost hit Brother Francis right on the noggin. And not a whole lot of padding up there. For <laughs> Benedict fouled it back. Mm -hmm. 
now it's official two RBIs for Murphy on the single to left a good curveball Hamaker is out of the inning is the defense wasn't the best but the Braves score five times they do it on three hits one air nobody left We've played three, and Phil Necro and the Braves lead the Giants 5 nothing. We go to the fourth inning here, and there's the man that's the story, at least for us in Atlanta. I know those of you watching out in Northern California are more about the Giants, but for us, the story is Phil Necro. In the other baseball, Toronto has Detroit shut out 1 nothing after 5.5, Alexander against Clancy. That slow knuckleball, a little high. One ball, no strikes. Robbie Thompson is the batter. He bounced to short his first half. Bob Dernier led the game off with a home run, and the Cubs lead St. Louis 1 0 after two and a half. Plus Lancaster against Danny Cox. Houston 2 0, as Pete told you, over Cincinnati. The pitch. Nowhere near. The Mets 8-1 over the Pirates at the end of four. Kevin McReynolds has been on a tear. A three-run homer is 29th. Mike Dunn got knocked out. Montreal, Philadelphia 3-3 after five and a half. There's a strike. Looks like a fastball. American League, the Yankees and Baltimore 1-1. That's after three. Minnesota winning big over Kansas City 6-1. Gary Gaetti, Kirby Puckett, Ken Herbeck of all homered for Minnesota. Uh oh. Off the wall. Throw to second. He'll be in there. Standing double. That didn't miss getting out by much. I think maybe Renicky lost that ball out there. Yeah, I think Gary thought that ball had enough on it to get out of the ballpark because after he turned, he kind of stopped on it. And it hits very high off the fence. He thought it was going to be out of here. Got it back in quickly, but Thompson was standing in second. Boston, Milwaukee scoreless after two. That's California 6 2 over Cleveland after three and a half, and that's all the other baseball. San Diego at Los Angeles later. Uribe bats. And now you're in a situation where we really don't envy Chuck Tanner. Anything he does here is wrong. He wants to win the game, he doesn't want Phil Negro to be embarrassed. So how long do you go with it? You want him to get the five innings in. You'd like him to get in, in nine shutout innings, but base hit right field, runner around third. Murphy up and throwing. They got a shot. He's safe. The throw pops away. Necro backs up and holds the runner at second. It's a single, an RBI, and second on the throw. Kelly Downs in the giant bullpen. Two solid hits. Uh, Phil here in the fourth. Uribe gets a knuckleball on the outside part of the plate. Still able to pull it into right field. Murphy charging made a good stab at getting that runner at home. But his throw a little bit out in front. Benedict tried to short hop it. Kicked off his glove. Necro backed up but the runner down to second anyway. Dave Henderson will come out here and pinch hit for Atlee Hamaker. Now a left-hander cranking up in the bullpen for the Giants. So a Hamaker went three innings, allowed four hits, struck out three, walked one, allowed five runs, four of them earned. One home run, one hit batsman. Joe Price now in the Giant bullpen. So Henderson stands in with a runner at second. Nobody out. Joe Price is the pitcher now warming up in the giant bullpen. Joe Price. The knuckleball is high. Benedict boxed it. One ball, no strikes. No activity in the Atlanta bullpen. Two no. Wenny, we've mentioned it before, and we mentioned it 
10 years ago and we'll mention it again now when he falls behind and has to throw the fastball. He's not anywhere near the pitcher that he is when he's ahead in the cup. There's the strike. It's two and one. Chuck Carey now begins to limber up for Atlanta. Look out. Three and one. As I mentioned, there's Chuck Carey. Henderson is aboard. And all of a sudden, it's not getting any better for next year. It's his fifth walk. That's what he was most concerned about, having not pitched in a game since late August. His control, which from time to time will bother him even when he's pitching every fourth or fifth day, really was worrisome to him coming into this game. The Giants have left six men on in the first three innings, and they have two aboard with nobody out here. Milner has flied to left, bounced to second. Kevin Mitchell waits on deck. High and away, one ball, no strike. I'm sure home plate umpire Terry Tata feels some pressure too. Line base hit right field. Runner around third, Murphy up. They're going to hold him, and the bases are loaded, and the tying run is coming to the plate. And they're hitting the ball hard here in the fourth. And I am glad I'm not Chuck Tanner right now. Yeah, it's going to be a very difficult spot for Chuck. He knows that if he takes Phil Necro out of a ball game with a lead, it's going to be a very unpopular decision with the big crowd here. But he doesn't want to embarrass Phil right. Necro either. And he can also get paid to try to win games. Well, let's see what happens. Kevin Mitchell, the batter. A left hand hitter is next, and a left hander in the bullpen. So it may come down to whether or not he can get Kevin Mitchell, who's flied to center and doubled. It floated outside. One ball, no strikes. He can't get ahead of a hitter in this inning. Five one is our score. The Giants about hit the Braves six four. The Giants have six hits and five walks and trail five to one in the fourth. There are thirty thousand people here trying to will Phil Necro through this inning. Fastball. Two and one. Uribe, Henderson, Milner, your runners. Upstairs. Three and one. He walked in a run, it's five to two. Here comes Chuck Tanner. And he will be booed, I'm sure. Mitchell is credited with his 66th RBI, but he's trotting out there. And he may leave it up to Necro here. Chuck has been quoted all week as saying this is Phil's day. Whatever That's is it. going to transpire on Sunday is going to transpire. He's going to make a pitching change here. I'll guarantee you, though, he asked Phil Necro first. And you are going to hear some ovation when Phil Necro leaves this mound. So Chuck Carey comes on. Don't take the booze personally, Chuck. It's got nothing to do with you. They're starting already. Now, let's just sit back and you listen to this. They're on their feet. 
He gives him the ball. Now, wait a minute. Harry Wendelstead is being called in. curtain call. Nancy and the boys look on. On the message board, they're playing a retrospective of Nancy's career. He says goodbye to Harry Wendelstead, who's umpired in this league for almost as long as Nuxie's pit. The scoreboard is the story here as they keep showing the excerpts of his career. Well, the last thing the retrospective showed was a picture of the Hall of Fame. Phil waving to his family now. Maybe we can get him to come up here and see us before the day is over. Yeah, that'd be great. Now back to war. Andy Maldonado will pinch it here for and will doubtless stay in the game in the outfit. Chuck Carey on to work. Boy, he'll never forget this appearance in his young career. Well, we wish he could have done better, but let's face it, folks, he could have done a lot worse for a man of his age. And he got what he always wanted, a chance to walk off this mound in that uniform one more time. Maldonado against Carey in a strike, and it's 0-1. The bases are loaded. It's a 5-2 game. Phil went three plus. Six hits, no strikeouts, five walks. A ball and a strength to count. Stunned Benedict a little bit. He 
Catchers get used to this over the course of a season. I wonder how many times a catcher gets hit on the mask, on the glove, on the arm, on the shoulder by a foul tip. The bases are loaded. There's nobody out. <laughs> Some of the fans are headed for home. The last time I saw that was the night Henry Aaron hit number 715 here. A ball and two strikes. <laughs> two and two is the count. Will Clark is on deck. Anderson at third, Milner at second, Mitchell at first. Check if Phil had six walks. And there's a drive to deep left, and the ballpark may not hold it. It is out of here. Candy Maldonado, a grand slam homer as a pinch hitter. That's how he earned his spurs last year. And just like that, the champagne goes back on ice in the giant clubhouse, and they take the lead. 